friend of mine died a couple weeks back. Still ain't past it. At least you got your health. Yes, Mr. Thompson. I'm fine, Mr. Thompson. Never been healthier. Well, uh, did, uh, did Mr. Thompson send you? Well, you tell Mr. Thompson I'll be right at my post. Tomorrow. Uh, bright and early tomorrow. Because I'm definitely not plagued. As spry as a spring chicken. <laughs> That's old Abernathy. And what are you doing here? Visiting? Well, let me give you the grand tour. This here's my domicile. And there's the door. Silas knows, doesn't he? That's why he sent you. That's why he wants me to pay up. He knows. I'm dying. I'm not long for this world. The date of my expiration is fast approaching. And soon I shall be ushered through the great cannery in the skies. Don't say that, Mr. Abernathy. You still got a couple decades in you? I'd steer clear, Ms. Holcomb. My affliction's bound to be contagious. It's plague. Has to be. Silas knows. He knows I got one foot in my grave, and now he wants to charge me for the other one. You are? Oh, wow. First time anyone's ever told me that. I'll pay your fees. I don't want any trouble from Silas. But if you could see a way to freelancing for me, I could really use the help. Couple hours out of your day and some light second story work, that's all. There's a cache of anthracillin tucked away in the old community center. Powerful stuff. Stronger than what we got, anyway. I need you to break in, nab that medicine, and bring it back to me. I'll do what I can. You will not find any guards within sight of that old place. Marauders, on the other hand. It is a reality of life in the Vale. Grass is brown, sky is gray, marauders are outside the walls. So you'll do it then? You oblige me with your haste. I think I feel the plague spreading. Oh, Lord, it's in my spleen now. I can feel it. You're making a mistake working for Abernathy. Hey, Miss Parvati. Come for a visit? Not today. Just helping this lady. Lovely to see you about, Miss Parvati. Things going all right, Silas? Been keeping him careful and true, Miss. Best to ask her yourself. My dad's buried here. Silas watches over him when I get... when I can't leave the house. Oh. Well, thanks. Something I can do for you? You run into any trouble? Conrad's barbershop is a yawning pit that swallows his every bit. I keep telling him he should cut a few corners, skimp out on the disinfectant. You gotta put the squeeze on Conrad. Find some dirt on him. Maybe check his back room. Well, that's the word, extortion. Been on the tip of my tongue all day.
Keep your distance, friend. And your rations yet? I've always felt weird in here. It's too clean. Yes, what is it? You're an outsider. Fantastic. Vicar Maximilian de Soto at your service. Or Vicar Max, if you're the sort who prefers brevity. And Ms. Holcomb as well. How rare to see you out. And with a complete stranger. Curious. Just tagging along, Vicar de Soto. Don't mind me. I so rarely get new people to talk to. Name your poison, anything at all. Spiritual counseling, this season's tossball predictions, the quickest way out of town. But what? I, I thought you would talk to him. You wanted to speak to me, Ms. Holcomb? Every time I've tried to engage you in conversation, you look at the floor, answer in single words, and slink away. I can't imagine what would be so grave as to drive her to my mission. What has Mr. Thompson asked you to do? Depriving them of safety from the marauders and wildlife. I can see why that troubles you. Miss Holcomb has a soft heart. Always has, if you believe the talk. They rejected the order of society and live beyond the walls so thoughtfully provided by our Spacer's Choice patrons. Does that strike you as a responsible life choice? Assuming your goal is to save as many as possible, then you should bring everyone together. Send the power to Edgewater and convince the deserters to return to the fold. Not if things are left to stand as they are. If you don't mind a bit of unsolicited advice, be cautious on your way to the geothermal plant. It is not as safe as you might assume. One of the reasons I transferred here was to fulfill my duty in hunting down banned heretical texts. I happen to know such a book is, as we speak, tainting a collector's library in Emerald Vale. However, the collector's residence lies outside the town's walls. My retrieval efforts have been thwarted by marauders who have overrun the property. Should you fare better than me, I'd pay a handsome sum for the book. I just want to keep the writing out of layman's hands. It wouldn't do for such information to fall into public consumption. On the contrary, my position means that I am one of the few legally allowed to possess such items. But do not worry. You'll be safe since you are acting on my behalf. Glad we see eye to eye. It's a handwritten journal, a faded blue cover with the name M. Bakonu handwritten in the lower corner. I'll mark where I saw it on your map. Assuming you're serious? It is not only a beautiful relic of a bygone time, it's also the thoughts of an early thinker on the nature of man's place in the cosmos. Not many in this colony could understand its true value, should they ever read it. Thank you. If you retrieve it, you can always find me here.
Move along, stranger. We don't want any trouble. I don't know you. Whatever you're looking for, it ain't here. Move along. Answers, huh? You must be one of those philosophicals. Already got ourselves one of those. A geo what? Look, plants ain't my purview. You're better off asking after Adelaide. If you're gonna start wandering around my camp, know that I got my sights on you. Over in the hothouse, tending crop. Enough with the questions. No offense, but I've got a lot on my mind. Well, look at you. Buzzing around the Aether with your very own ship. Rest of us gotta make do with the ground at our feet. No, I'm sorry. That was unworthy of me. Lady named Zoe went missing some nights ago. Just up and vanished without a trace. 
Now I'm pacing around wondering if Marauders got to her. It's not like Zoe to go wandering. Figured she might be out scavenging, but that ain't exactly her talent. Can't imagine where she's gone. Vale's a wide place. She could be anywhere. Could do without the gallows humor. I'll tell you what I can. Well, enough to know we never got on. Zoe and Stefan were close. If anybody knows the workings of her mind, he does. She was lazy and thoughtless, but she's still one of our own. What is it? If you're hungry, there's meat turning on the spit outside. If you're barren illness, find a place to lay your head down and I'll fetch you a poultice. Whatever your troubles with Edgewater, leave them at the gates and be welcomed here. Any questions, dear? I have been called that, among other things. Green Thumb, Grandmother, the strange old lady who keeps flowers. But yes, Adelaide will do just fine. Excuse me, Miss McDevitt? Sorry, it's just... You got such pretty trees in here. Why, thank you. You're Robert's girl, aren't you? I remember when you were but a sprout. Thomas speaks of you often. Are you staying long? You should try some of my tobacco-horn tea. I brew it in an old spittoon, but it's been cleaned. Thompson, you here on behalf of that cold-eyed reptile? Let's hear it. What's Reed's idea of peace, then? Like everything else that comes out of Edgewater, that peace offering is canned. I and my own are living just fine out here by ourselves. He would do such a thing. The question is, why would you agree to his plans? Cannery's got a regulator. You want ship parts, you ought to rip them out of the cannery's guts and leave us be. If you're going down to the plant, you should divert power away from Edgewater and toward our end of the grid. Think about it. You'd be liberating an entire town from a lifetime of service to that odious cannery. Seems the sort of thing a hero would do. A hero to the people who matter. To us. To the ones who come around. To the ones you save. Reed will never understand. He has been too long inebriated on the wine of corporate culture. All he sees is productivity, output, profits. Life in Edgewater grinds to a halt. The cannery shuts down. Workers desert in droves and our own little camp grows and thrives. You bring power to Reed's town and you'll be killing us. Reed knows it, he's counting on it. You've seen that miserable excuse for a town with your own lamps. Hollowed out workers laboring their lives away at the cannery, living off whatever scrap spacer's choice throws them. You know that's true, don't you, Ms. Holcomb? Your father died of overwork. His heart gave out. 
he, he was tired all the time, sure, but he was old, ma'am, and he raised me all by his lonesome. Look what they did to this child. Lost her family to the company, and still she defends them. I'm all right. I ain't so fragile. That was unkind of me. I'm sorry, dear. It's not much of a living. Every single person in that town has sold themselves to Spacer's Choice. The company owns them. Body, blood, and bones. You've been there. You've seen it. All anyone ever does is toil over a cannery. They give their lives for some heartless corporation, and then they're tossed into a Spacer's Choice brand cemetery. So, what do you say? Divert power over to us. Shut down that abominable cannery for good. Something you need? That's on account of how I never met her. I don't rightly know. She was in another division of the Spacer's Choice family. She worked in the Vale a few months, sorting the cannery computers. Her contract said any kids she had, expected or not, belonged to her office from the time of conception. So when I was born, I got sent here. Well, I don't know about normal. Dad said she worked under some kind of special contract. It's sensible. Dad just fixed machines. She did some kind of crazy math, high-level stuff. Better to raise me on his time than hers. You mean about the mission being too clean? I know, but Vicar says the universe is a machine, that it runs by law. Real machines have gunked up oil, scratches, and worn bits. You can tell they've seen handling, been used by folk. The machine Vicar sees is one ain't never been run. It, it's not for people to live in. It's something on a museum shelf, under glass. It just comes off cold to me, is all.
Nicely done.
Almost lost a finger in the cannery today. Just the way it goes. My offer remains standing, should you reconsider. Go ahead. That you are not one of us may work to your advantage. Adelaide and her folk loathe the people of Edgewater, you see. I admit the fault was mine. I'm about as diplomatic as a bristling canid. I just hope Adelaide and her folk will see their way past my flaws and return to town. Scripture tells us we all have our purpose in the world. Our work shows us that purpose. We should not have to move on from it. Yes, we have lost good workers to desertion. We have lost even more to plague. But it is why we must square our shoulders and carry on. Losing Adelaide was the hardest. She was our only flavor specialist. When she walked away, I knew we were in trouble. Spacer's Choice Saltuna is renowned across the system for its quality flavors and additives. We used to sell citrus-flavored Saltuna in our heyday. Ever since Adelaide left, we have been reduced to selling unflavored and spearmint. Go ahead. Adelaide was our only flavor specialist. We are a Saltuna canning institution. Saltuna without flavor is like a cysty pig without tumors, borderline inedible. Word up to me, friend. I'd stack our larders with Saltuna galore. No other brand of Saltuna adds as much vim or vigor to the body's humors. But, and this is something we must keep between the two of us, Saltuna is hard to come by. What with being a species indigenous to the seas of another world. You mean you don't know? Why, Monarch, of course. Spacer's Choice ran a mighty fishing enterprise on that world. As it so turns out, Saltuna do not take as readily to the waters of Terra too. Scrawnier than their Monarch cousins. Forces us to pack our cans with additives, you see. Oh, we've scavenged together some organic material from the surrounding environs. Mostly organic, mostly local mushrooms. Some of which possess a texture akin to a well-boiled slab of saltuna. The difference is all but impossible to detect to any but the prissiest of palate.
to poke around in here. Sweeping the area. Here they come!
control room should be off to the right. I hope we're doing the right thing. Unexpected no investigating. Here they come! Three switches. That'll be easy enough. work. 